Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, Pastor, a while back you gave a message, and it's really stuck with me all this time. And and you were speaking at you were teaching at a Second Timothy chapter four, and you came across Demas. And at one time, uh, Demas was considered fruitful for the ministry. And then later on, when we look at Second Timothy chapter four verse ten, it says, "For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed." For Thessalonica. You know, Pastor, in all the years of doing ministry, and even as you're raising up men in our mentoring class, uh, you 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 disciple men, the Demases. Are there still Demas? There are always going to be Demases in the church. Always. You know, funny thing about it, I was recently sharing uh on this topic in uh in Florida when I was I went to a, a men's conference. I was teaching at a men's conference in um, West Florida by uh, by Tampa in a place called Brandon. And uh, this was one of the messages I gave on Demas. Yeah, there are Demases that are in the church. You know, Paul speaks about him and shares of him uh, more than once. He's mentioned more than once in Scripture, and he's looked at and recognized and identified as uh, a fellow worker, a fellow minister of the gospel. He was somebody who visited Paul when Paul was in in prison. He was aware of the conditions Paul lived under. And uh, he was uh, somebody mentioned to, uh, to churches, and the churches will remember his name when mentioned, you know, um, the churches of that age. And I was sharing how it was a, a blessing uh, for him to be re remembered throughout church history. I mean, every time you read Colossians and, and a couple other portions of Scripture that refer to him, every time you read it, you, you read the name of Demas. So his name was, uh, was um, uh, it, 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 it's, it's been recorded in the history of the church. And so Demas was somebody who was a traveling companion of Paul. Demas was an individual who was known as a servant, uh, as I've mentioned in the past, uh, Demas was so well known that the people would uh, recognize the name once it was was mentioned. And uh, it would be like this. It would be like if you were having a uh, church service or perhaps you're having a, a conference and and people would look into the back of the room and they'd see a little bit of a commotion. Perhaps somebody's about to come in and they would look and they'd say to one another, that's Demas. Demas is, he travels with Paul. He's, he's a good man. And they would talk about him and they would walk up and they'd greet him with a kiss and they'd say, how are you? They loved this guy, Demas. I mean, it's obvious he was a man who had great credibility. And yet Paul's uh, epitaph for him, the last statement you ever hear of this man, Demas, is uh, Demas has departed. He has abandoned me. He has forsaken me. He has left me holding the bag, he said, and has departed to Thessalonica. He said, uh, having loved this present world, he departed. He abandoned me. So there are men that we can think of right now who had very well-known ministries. Men, if I mentioned their names, uh, people would instantly recognize their name. They'd say, oh yeah, he had a great work, a great ministry. There are men like Demas who, having loved this present age, departed, uh, abandoned, completely forsook, and left Paul there, you know. Demas had the opportunity to travel with Paul. He, he may very well have never traveled much before because during the time of Paul, not everybody had a chance to get on a ship and travel from one point to another. Not everybody went to Rome. Not everybody went to some of the major cities, Ephesus and all. Not many people had that opportunity. Demas did. Demas was able to see various things, went to various places, and he was able to see um, how the other other half lives. We used to, we used to say that, how the, other, how the other half lives. Those who were rich and those who were well-known and and uh, so on the one hand, he, he sees all the riches. And on the other hand, he sees this old man in a jail cell 
Um, all he wants is a, a cloak and some parchments. And uh, eventually he begins thinking, apparently, um, where does it get you? Where do you get Paul? Uh, I've seen some of the, uh, the better things in the world, and, and now I just see an old man saying, I'm cold. Can you please bring me parchments? Please bring me the scrolls. Bring me the word of God. I need these things. And for Demas, I, I, no, I, I love this present age. I don't care about the age to come. I don't care about heaven. I don't care about the pie in the sky by and by. I, I want what I can get right now. So are there men like Demas? Absolutely. Have I encountered them? Indeed. Do they go to church even in this fellowship? I'm certain they do. What are they looking for? Something beyond um, uh, the promises of the kingdom. They're looking for something that that will be more right now for them, more pleasant right now for them and and they they walk away um what do you do you've got to set your sights on things above and not on things that are on the earth you you you've got to hold fast to what is true and not let go of it you need to you need to uh, move towards uh, gaining the prize of eternal life through jesus christ and actually and actually value that above everything else because uh, what we have right now is temporary, but what we lay ahead in heaven is, is eternal. And you, you need to cultivate this in your mind. You need to actually believe that, and uh, you need to pursue that with all of your heart and learn the lesson of Demas. Because, yeah, there are, there are many people in the church who, who it wasn't hard for them to stop attending church. It wasn't hard for them to stop going to Bible studies. You know, if I look back at this fellowship, John, I've been here for 40 years, and and th there were young people at one time in this church who who they were at every Bible study. You know, you have a midweek, they're there. You have a, 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 a retreat, they're there. You have a Sunday night, they're there. You have regular church services, they are in attendance. They get caught up in dating, and they start not coming as often to church, not growing like they once, not serving like they once did, and and they get married and then they have their children and, and now you hear them saying, well, you know, I've got kids to raise. And then after the kids have uh, grown up a little bit, we're, we're gonna be back, you know, and then you, you never see them again because they, they love this present age. It, that doesn't happen to everybody. And yes, there are times that you need to, to focus on certain things. Of course, I'm not saying that, that you, you shouldn't take care of the obligations and needs that you have, but it's kind of easy for us to forsake the things that got us to where we are to pursue other things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I see that. I see that often. I've seen that many times, you know, over the, over the years I followed the Lord. Yeah, having loved this present age, it's still there. Pastor, as a senior pastor, uh, I'm sure you've experienced the hurt that Paul must have gone through. In some ways. And, and that, you know, I didn't realize how impact impact how much impact that Demas had where you pointed out that he would be at for example a conference and he would walk in and there'd be commotion because he was there yeah. mm -hmm. he was Paul one of Paul's guys mm -hmm. and you know as you're sharing this I, I'm reminded when Jesus said even my familiar friend you know uh, the Demas is uh, it was like he lifted up a heel against me mm -hmm. and I could imagine out, out of all the years that you've been a senior pastor you, you gave that message of, and it was almost like a bone chilling when you said, Demas, are you here? Yeah, I was speaking at a pastor's conference and I was sharing with the men and I stopped for a moment. And I said, Demas, are you here? Where are you? Hmm. I said, I know you're here. I know you're here. Where are you, Demas? Because you're here right now. And yes, and these are pastors and leaders in the church who will very definitely, there will be some who will, having loved this present age, depart. There's no doubt about it. I've seen it. I've been a Christian 50 years. I've been in ministry um, for 48. And uh, I've been a uh, pastor, ordained pastor for 40, uh, 42 years. And I've pastored this church for 40. Uh, can you imagine how many Demases? Can you imagine even here on this staff, how I've had Demases who who have uh, betrayed my trust as the pastor, betrayed the trust of this church, who have uh, 
gone off into areas that uh, that have broken my heart, to be honest with you, that have disappointed me and, and hurt me in, in, in ways that, um, that only a pastor would understand. So yeah, I've, I've met my share of Demases. I've even employed them. And, uh, and it's still a warning. It's still a warning that needs to be heeded. Don't love this present age because it's all gonna one day just turn to nothing and God is gonna create the new heavens and the new earth. And, and the only things that, that matters are the things that you do for the Lord. Amen. And it, we, if we understood that, John, this church, the church, would be making a better impact. But because people they say, well, you know, I can't go to church because I'm afraid of this or that, or I can't this or that. And um, the church, I think, is, is, has been exposed and its, uh, its underbelly is very weak. Mm -hmm. But then again, there are those who, who say, uh, you know what, I'm, I, I'm gonna serve God no matter what. And, and they do whatever is necessary in their own context to do that. And in this fellowship, we've seen many people who have uh, decided to do something else or go somewhere else and God bless them as they do. I pray that wherever it is that they went, that they're being fed, that's all I care about for their sake, John. And then there are others who simply said, you know what, um, I don't need church anymore. I don't need to go there anymore. I don't need to go anywhere anymore. And those, they're the ones that break your heart. But then uh, there will always be, there will always be those that receive the, the seed on the wayside or on, in uh, thorny ground or in the shallow, shallow ground, in the rocky soil. There'll always be that. Um, then there'll always be a Demas, but then again, there will also always be a Timothy or a Titus, maybe even someday, somebody like a Paul. Well, thank you, Pastor. That I, we've been talking about this, you know, off off camera for a little bit of time, and and it was something I wanted to hear your heart on. And so, thank you, and thank you guys for tuning in, joining us, join us this Sunday at eight thirty and ten forty five, as Pastor David, you're taking us through Matt. Um, Mark Gospel of Mark we're looking at the the, the parable of the mustard mm. seed and want to invite your friends and family to come out and join us and then those who are going to Israel we have an information meeting after second service this Sunday in the sanctuary even if you're thinking about going to Israel I know you may have questions come join us Pastor David will be there Bill for Flor Forleano. Forleano will be there from Inspired Travel and uh, and again Pastor David thank you for your time and friends, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And pastor, we'll see you soon. Okay.